Good evening, good morning, and good day. Thank you so much once again for choosing to spend a little bit of your time with me. Today, uh, I just want to read like a little script that I wrote. Um, I'm actually streaming right now, but uh, just got chat hidden because they're behaving like dickheads. <laughs> so, just going to read a script quickly um, about some thoughts I'd had on language and its impact on the DID community. Littles, some advice. Don't use that term. It comes from age sliding, a kink, a fetish, and something not necessarily linked to childhood trauma and <laughs> acceptable when engaged in by consenting adults. It has nothing to do with trauma. You need to replace it with something like dissociated childhood state flashback. Something real, something medical. Currently there's this view that so-called child alters are fun and should be embraced. That healing from trauma or achieving a life unimpeded by your DID requires embracing and accepting all your various dissociated parts. This certainly has its roots in truth, but I think has been misinterpreted and mis misunderstood. You as an adult can embrace dumbass kiddie shit without getting triggered into a serious amnesic state where you can barely converse. Myself and those in your life do not see those moments in time as your younger parts. It's not really how it manifests to the external world at all, is it? I've been stuck on that term for a while now, and I think this is the reason why. For the people in your lives, those of you with DID, there is nothing fun about that particular state at all. It's stressful and upsetting, and yeah, sometimes it could be funny, in the same way that laughing with someone when they're suffering can bring levity. Sometimes it's endearing, but overall it is shitty. It's scary. But don't be silly and think people are afraid of you. No one thinks it's split and that you have the beast. They're afraid for you. Okay, let's get real and a bit more upsetting for a minute. It is not the easiest time... This room. Is it not the easiest time to trigger out a sexual part of yourself? into a manipulative, or rather in a manipulative, exploitative, and negative manner? Are you not more likely to self-harm, waste money, waste time, drink, drugs, do shit that you might hate, regret, you might end up hurt, do shit that the next day it feels like you got raped? That's not a child alter, a little, or even a younger part. That is not what it is. You are you, you have trauma, and it feels like you're a child, that you are no longer you. It feels that to you 100%, I believe that. But I think when talking about it, when discussing it, there is a better way. Make it unfriendly, boring, not interesting. It's not fun or entertaining. It isn't for you, right? It's a type of flashback. Surely that's bad. It's a very specific, triggered, dissociated flashback relating to a very specific type of trauma, according to all the literature upon it. Cough, CSA, cough. That's according to Sinis and Van der Hart, and also the actual psychiatrists, too. Everyone agrees on where the child parts come from, right? So the rhetoric around it all is, it's warped, but that's because of terms like little, or even younger part, and child alter, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't describe it correctly. It describes the feeling the person with DID is experiencing. How they might identify themselves at the time, but it is not the identity of the person and not how we as a whole, as a community, or the medical community especially, should identify it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> describes the feeling, as I say, that you, the person with the ID, is experiencing the false reality you might be living in in that moment, that that degree of dissociation begins. If you are in that state as a little, that means hefty dissociation, ergo, a major flashback. And just because you look like a retarded child instead of a soldier with a gun, it's no different to ex nam vets hearing a car backfire and then shooting their wife and kids.
boom, etc., etc. Cool. Been wanting to record that one for a bit. Tick that one off the list. Yeah, I think you've got it, Mike. It's exactly. I Eve. I think like talking about like our a regressed state. Even that would be better terminology. Saying somebody with DID is experiencing a regressed state. Part of DID is experiencing a regressed state. Doesn't that sound better than saying people with DID have alters and some of their alters are littles? People with DID sometimes experience psychological regression. That sounds way more accurate. And it, it, it psychological regression would encapsulate a whole variety of things occurring, right? Whole different selection of mental faculties that might be impaired by a form of temporary psychological regression that occurs due to trauma. Fuck. I need to write that. Renaming DID idea. Psychological regression. Uh, temporary traumagenic psychological regression. Temporal? Temporal. Temporal uh, traumagenic psychological regression. Regressed psychological state. Yeah, no, but the retarded child was to fucking hammer it in. <laughs> it's meant to be edgy. It was meant to be brutal. I was writing a script. When I write scripts, I'm often way more unhinged. Shall I re renate shall I re narrate that bit? What you, what would you guys suggest there? Just because you look like a regressed psychological state. That doesn't make sense. Just because you look like a retarded child. Boom. <laughs> but yeah, temporal traumagenic psychological regression. Or aggress psychological state. These terms describe the idea of littles of having certain alters that are littles in a far more appropriate descriptive and accurate manner just th like regressed psychological state littles uh, i have certain alters that are, uh, some of my alters are littles i have did and sometimes i experience a regressed psychological state Whoa, that's such a big difference i have did and sometimes one of the symptoms is temporal traumagenic psychological regression TTPR. Oh, it's, it's different. <sighs> you ever heard of the murder of Kyle Dink uh, Dinkler? I can't. Act I can't show the, the video on on stream. Um. It's one of the most famous incidents. But God, it happened in 1998, so I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of you haven't heard of it or don't remember it. Murder of Carl Dinkler took place on Monday, January 12th, 98, when Dinkler, the deputy in the Lawrence County, Georgia Sheriff's Office, pulled over a motorist and Vietnam War vet, Andrew Howard Brannan, for speeding. 
Verbal confrontation escalated to a shootout resulting in Brandon murdering Dinkler. The murder continues to receive national attention because the traffic stop and shootout were captured on a personal video recorder Dinkler had placed on his patrol car dashboard and activated when he stopped Brandon. This was one of the first major like dash cam clips to go nationwide, but also global. In the shootout, Dinkler was armed with his semi-automatic pistol, whilst Brannon was armed with an Ivor Johnson M1 carbine. Dinkler shot and wounded Brannon. Despite this, Brannon fired the rifle, reloaded it, fired a lethal shot into Dinkler's eye, and fled the scene as Toyota pickup truck. The next morning, police found Brannon still in Lawrence County, hiding in a sleeping bag beneath a camouflage tarp. Police arrested him for the murder of Dinkler. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, um, in part that he suffered PTSD, stemming from his military service in Vietnam. Because Dinkler's video recorded most of Brandon's actions, the jury found he murdered the deputy in premeditated, torturous, and cruel manner. Two years following the murder, January 28, 2000, the jury convicted Brandon. On January 30th, he was sentenced to death. 17 years and one day after the murder, January 13th, 2015, he was executed by lethal injection. Now, I watched this video the week that I was making the dissociated, the original dissociated videos. And it's one of the things which just had me so... One of those extra things that added to my rage towards her at the time, interestingly. Because what we had here on film is um, the most perfect example of somebody splitting because of a flashback. The all-encompassing flashback that caused the man to actually split in that moment. Training, decades-old training kicks in. Movements kick in, and in, in the court they discussed that the, he was back in Nam. Um... The reason why they decided it was torturous let me read out the actual confrontation now blah 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 the traffic stop first appeared to be routine both Dinkler and the driver Andrew Brannon exiting their vehicles and exchanging greetings Brannon, however, placed both hands into his pockets, at which point Dinkler instructed him to remove his hands and keep them in plain view. At this point, Brannon became belligerent and yelled at the deputy to shoot him. He then began to dance and wave his arms in the middle of the road. He looked insane. He's dancing like he's completely lost his mind. Dinkler radioed the dispatch for assistance and issued commands for Brannon to cease his behavior and approach the cruiser. When Brannon saw that Dinkler was calling for other units, he ran towards the deputy in an aggressive manner. Dinkler retreated whilst issuing commands and utilised his baton to keep Brandon at bay. On Dinkler's dashcam video, Brandon was heard shouting that he was a goddamned Vietnam combat veteran. Despite commands issued by Dinkler, Brandon walked back to his pickup truck and suddenly he's he's like he's having a mental breakdown and then he just snaps. He goes super cold. He goes super cold. He just snaps. He goes ice cold. And he calmly walks back to his pickup truck calmly pulls out his Ivor Johnson M1 carbine from underneath the driver's seat. Slowly takes cover near the driver's side door. Dinkler positioned himself near the passenger door of his cruiser and gave Brannon commands for approximately 40 seconds before Brannon stepped away from his pickup truck, pointed his rifle at Dinkler and fired several shots. Dinkler fired the first shot at Brannon, but missed, leading some to speculate that it might have been a warning shot. Dinkler did not strike Brannon initially and thus was forced to reload. At this point, Brandon ran from his truck towards Dinkler and began to fire again, hitting the deputy in exposed areas such as the arms and legs. Brandon then began to reload his weapon as the now injured Dinkler tried to position himself and near the driver's side of his cruiser. Brandon appeared to go back to his car to retreat before another shot from Dinkler was heard. This enraged Brandon, who began advancing and firing at the deputy, hitting him numerous times. Before being disabled from gunfire, Dinkler was able to inflict a gunshot wound to Brandon's stomach. Dinkler had been shot nine times when Brandon took careful aim and said, Die, fucker and fired a final fatal shot into Dinkler's right eye. Brandon then retreated into his truck and fled the scene. There is more to it than that. There's like... It fucking... The 
There's so much more to it. I watched a really long video about this once. It was fascinating. Uh, a psychologist for the defense indicated that the bizarre encounter with Dinkler in 98 was likely the result of a flashback to Brandon's time in combat. 94, the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, had declared Brandon 100% disabled for experiencing depression and bipolar disorder. 100% disabled. So Brandon's lawyers tried to get his death sentence commuted. Um, they were just like, nah, I'm going to kill you. And he wanted death. He spent his entire time in jail basically apologizing and praying for his death. He felt awful for it. He's always said it wasn't him as well. I wonder if I can. I know I don't normally ever show this sort of thing on stream, but I think where this one's so old. So this is sort of like the first one that happened and you can't you can't see the actual final fatal bit I think but I'm just going to check because I just want to show you the beginning where the PTSD kicks in yeah we're not going to watch the whole of this video but I just want you to see the moment where he changes and this is sort of what I was referencing in the final bit of my uh, writing Driver, step back here to me. Come on back here for me. Come on back. How you doing today? Good. Come on back here and keep your hands out of your pocket. Keep your hands out of your pocket, sir. Sir. Come here. Sir, come here. 37 Radio 1078. Come here, sir. Sir, get back. What are you calling, Sir, get back. That was the aggressive approach. Like, he was dark. He was insane, man. Now, get back. Get back. Sir, get back now. No. Get back. Fuck you. Sir, get back. No. I'm telling you now. Get back, sir. He was attempting suicide by cop. Sir, get back. Sir. This is, the, right, so that was it. That's what the video I watched was. It was a video about suicide by cop and how it is very likely that Carl Dinkler was attempting suicide by cop and then his PTSD caused him to switch, enter a flashback, and instead end the cop's life. Yeah. Yeah. Vietnam, call yes, that and step back! And I am not... Sir, Fuck step, you. Back. Sir, step back now! Get back! Get back! Get back now! 1078, we're 1018! Sir, step back now! Sir, get back now! 16. Sir, get back! Get out of the car now! Get back location, right? Sir, get out of the car! Local cops, 37, can you advise them? I'll reveal my life! Get back here now! No. Get to where you're going to Put the gun down! Well, I got me out the gun, I need help! Put the gun down! No. Put it down! Now he's making defensive head maneuvers. This is, he's now like basically entered a fucking defensive position. Oh no! He has now behaved like, the, the level of different psychotic behaviors we've seen in this one and a half minutes. Put the guy down! Drop the guy now! And he starts shoot. Well, just just watch a minute of uh, not even a minute, but just watch five seconds. The the the, f the way he fires his shots, the military training has taken over. Yeah, it is. That's what I'm referencing there, though, basically. Um, that and a couple of other similar events that have taken place, sadly. Um, that's why I get really pissed off when I hear people talking about this shit, Micro, because the reality of PTSD from certain events is that actually your flashbacks can be dangerous to people. And then everyone's like, with DRD, well, I don't actually have the beast in me. 
They don't actually have a monster. I mean, well, guess what? A lot of people with PTSD are parts of themselves that they fear. So go fuck yourself. Love to have an issue. Ill problems where I didn't actually fear my problems. How can you not fear your mental health issues? What? what? Can you not fear your trauma and your PTSD? What? It's and it's a known thing that happens. This this is sadly a known thing that happens to vets with PTSD. US, this was twenty sixteen. Um, U.S. Army Reserve veteran, the police say, he killed his wife and kids. Uh, he suffered from PTSD. He was thirty three, actively seeking seeking help for complications associated with PTSD, going to marriage counselling with his wife. Um, blah blah blah. He snapped and killed a lot of them. So like it's it's a known story, you know what I mean? Like it's a known. It is so well known this story of the U.S. Navy vet, the U, the guy that went to Afghanistan, the guy that went to Iraq, the guy that was in Nam, snapping and shooting and killing his whole family and then himself. That's a trope, right? That's a meme about PTSD that makes us seem like monsters because it's a real issue. It is a real issue. And people with DID out there like, mm, everyone thinks we got the beast nurse, we're not with the beast. <laughs> but you guys do have PTSD. And so. <laughs> Where stolen valor comes from. Clary, it's because of Stolen Valor that I used to refer to my PTSD as mild PTSD. Because I still do not think I have PTSD remotely similar to somebody that, say, has had their leg blown off by an IED. I know I don't. I know I don't. what I mean everybody I've spoken to with the ID when I've at like spoken to them it's like what do your bad alters do well it's like self-harm drugs drink promiscuous sex self-harm and everyone you have spoken to with the ID like at length on this sort of subject when we get down to it what's the child state the, old, the child alter or whatever it's the most retarded point you can act it's like you but without your ability to like it's the most like this derealized, depersonalized the fucking state it seems somebody with DID can actually be in. Um thus also the most easy state to do awful things to be patently blunt about this. Like, you wanna rape somebody? When's the best time to do it? Oh, when they're so depersonalized and derealized that everything that they remember from that moment will seem like a dream that no way actually, that it's not real. They won't really remember it at all. That's kind of the perfect time to rape somebody or give them drugs. And so I don't like that state being talked about as littles or child alters. It sends a tingle down my spine of downplaying the severity of what people in that state are actually like because it means their brain has shut off their ability to remember like the last 10 years of their life it's shut off their ability to normally remember where they are it's shut off their ability to really remember who they are it's shut off their ability to probably recognize who anyone around them is um
Vice once wrote an article, I think. I think it was Vice. This isn't the article, but this is really recent and really similar to the article. So we'll read this instead. Experience, I lost my memory and fell in love with my husband for the second time. When I see a wedding photos, it's like looking at somebody else's. Um, did this woman suffer like a uh, brain? Yeah, fucking brain damage. So this is basically, this is a, a note, like people, brain damage. We know how that can give people major amnesia, like gone, erase entire chunks of your life if that bit of your brain goes. I met a guy, fuck, there was a regular at the pub. He's a local lollipop man as well in my area. Um, he was, he was only ever allowed half a pint and even that was like, uh, uh, it was a fucking a shandy. Um, he was he he he, he had he had a brain tumor as a kid, as a child he had a brain tumor. He's missing like full third or something of his of his brain. Um, he is able to talk. He's able to. He needs a full time carer. He lives with his brother. He has a full time carer, but he works as the local lollipop man. Um, and when you meet him, he'll tell you that he's the local lollipop man. And he'll tell you that he helps the kids cross the road. And then he'll tell you that he's the local lollipop man. And then he'll tell you that he helps the kids cross the road. And then he'll tell you that he lives with his brother. And then he'll take, tell you that he's the local lollipop man. That's it. That's all that's left. He was a lollipop man. He got hit by a car. He's still the lollipop man. Lollipop man is somebody who stands outside of school to help kids cross the road to get into the school. Yeah. They work for like 20 minutes a day, early in the morning, holding a sign up to help kids cross the road. One, f like, he's been, he's been it. He had a brain tumor. He has his three words. He has his three sentences. That's it. Like, damage, brain damage can affect people in really fucked ways. It's okay to know those things. Uh, I, yeah, whilst realizing that not everyone ends up in a situation where that kind of stuff ends up happening. Very true. One of my own lacks empathy, sympathy, and remorse, and it really shows. Yep. Bring on any vulnerability. Yep. Um, and we know there's a shit ton of people that look for that opportunity and tons of ways very true people talk about protecting child authors by not showing the names online as <laughs> if the fake child is gonna get docked i know like protecting the name is no you so oh, just yeah this is what i'm this is what i've realized clary is the language around did facilitates the bullshit doesn't facilitate an accurate understanding and so that's what that whole little's essay is is sort of trying to get at is that that term is actively damaging and needs to be replaced it does not explain what a little is um i think when i make the video i'll include some of the extra discussion we've had around it as well because it helps explain it more yeah it facilitates grifters massively. It'd be much harder to grift about littles if we discussed it correctly. It's also like naming. I think the whole thing of like naming alters is probably really useful for the person with DID just to keep track of certain things. I also think the naming conventions for alters is complete bullshit and completely made up as far as the need to have a name to express to anyone else or whatever. I, th I don't believe that side of it or whatever. I don't like maybe one alter might or whatever, but like it's just it doesn't it isn't congruent with what we understand of the disorder. This idea that every altar would have its own unique name when the idea is that every altar is also a mask for the real person and will have been referred to by that name their entire existence and life.
There's no need to categorize them into protector. There's no need to, yeah, there is zero need to categorize alters. That is wholly dangerous and unnecessary. Wholly. And again, just this whole idea of discussing them as alters. Dissociated states. You're experiencing hefty depersonalization and derealization due to fucking PTSD that comes from a very specific form of PTSD, possibly some other genetic relation as well going on. But the point is that, yeah, it, every way that we discuss it right now is unmedical and wrong. And language does shape reality. Um, like, I, do, I am not. What it what what is Vosh uh, post truthism or whatever it is, but I do believe that language is essential for shaping reality. Okay, um, so <sighs> up is only up because it defines the opposite of down and down is only down because it defines the opposite of up and blah 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 we're getting some really weird meta conversation about language there that isn't necessary actually but the point is language defines reality and if we shift the language if we do some conscious purposeful semantic drift around the language around did then we can entirely take away the larpy side of it we can entirely remove the mystical fantastical side of it and we can have it seen exactly like ptsd we can have it seen exactly like other disorders that are taken seriously sadly i will say thanks to loads and loads of people now saying they have ptsd it would seem like even that's coming issues but yeah. But yes, this person received horrific brain damage from a blow to the brow of their head below their helmet whilst kayaking. Jesus Christ, they smashed their head in whilst kayaking. Things changed after the incident. Before I was the chief at home, I organized the household and sorted any issues with our then teenage daughters, Lucy, Rose, and Caitlin. Richard and I shared aspirations, but I made things happen. I had more oomph. It was annoying sometimes. He said he was laid back. I said that wasn't the word I'd use, but we worked well together. My amnesia frustrated us. I couldn't remember anything about him. I was living with a stranger, and so was he. Bewildered and overwhelmed, I cried daily. Richard never criticised, he just encouraged me. I'd forget I'd turned on the cooker. He'd ask us something burning. His approach helped me stay calm, would smile and say oops. We loved the outdoors. Our honeymoon included quad biking, cycling and skiing in Scotland. After the accident, I stopped going out because I couldn't recognise people, places or events. I had to leave my learning support job and teach a training programme. My five-second memory wouldn't get me through nor my lack of self-awareness. I had a personality change. Before I'd been capable, liked, and in control, and that person had gone, I got into a low place. When we look at our wedding photos, it's like being shown someone else's pictures. It looks nice, the people are smiling, but I don't remember it. I feel sad for Richard that we, have those shared, that we can't have those shared memories. I'd ask him, why are you still with me? You're still you, he'd say. I made a commitment to you. It would have been easy. God, I can't read this. This will make me cry. This is so brutal, man. This is so brutal. That's the reality of amnesia. There is nothing funny, ha ha, about that. Fuck my life. 